Today, we look at the, the process of combating smallpox and uh, seek wisdom to overcome the coronavirus epidemic here. Recently, there have been breaking news from the U.S. that a pharmaceutical company called Moderna had obtained a successful results from the early clinical trials. However, the global chaos caused by the coronavirus is inevitably expected to be extended to at least one or two years, and the coronavirus is sure to be an epidemic that will be remembered as one that has greatly affected world history. It is necessary for us to look back on history to gain wisdom on how the smallpox was concurred for the human to respond to the pandemic caused by COVID-19. No other epidemic has affected world history in various ways as much as the smallpox. As you may know, it is a well-known fact that smallpox greatly helped Spain to conquer South America easily. To the South American natives who had never been exposed to smallpox, the transmission and the mortality rate was obviously very high. The coronavirus epidemic is said to be nature's counterattack against environmental destruction and overhunting of wild animals that have lost their habitat. As humans began to settle long ago and domesticated wild animals, diseases such as measles, tuberculosis, smallpox, influenza, whooping cough, and tropical malaria caused mutations in several animal pathogens, including cows, pigs, ducks, dogs, and chickens. They began to do harm to the people. Among them, cowpox, which occurs in cows, has also begun to occur in humans, and this is a smallpox. It is thought that the virus causing cowpox uh, has become a smallpox virus. The reason why smallpox is scared is the blisters on the skin, leaving serious scars on the skin, and when the virus gets into your eyes, it can cause blindness. This severe blister also occurs in the major internal organs such as the lungs, destroying tissue, resulting in loss of life. If the blisters were to occur in the mouth and the throat, it would be difficult for one to even drink water. It is known that 500 million people have lost their lives to smallpox during the past century. Such a scary and a fatal disease became the first disease for mankind to concur with the last patient from the Somalia in 1977. As you may know, Edward Jenner from England developed a vaccine method to prevent smallpox using pus of cowpox. He is called the father of immunology because he first realized the concept of immunity. Edward Jenner, a doctor in a rural village in the hometown, was told that people who milk maize didn't get the smallpox well. He didn't ignore it and he paid attention to it for a long time. After long observation, he raised a hypothesis that blister pus of human skin induced by cowpox virus would protect the human from smallpox. In a world, the virus that causes cowpox would be fatal to cows but only leave light symptoms to humans providing protection against the smallpox. He scraped the pus from cowpox blisters on the hands of Sarah Nairn, 
a milkmaid who was infected with cowpox and inoculated James, his gardener's son, in both arms. Nine days later, James showed symptoms of a cold and lost his appetite, but soon recovered. Later, Dr. Jenner injected fresh pus from a person infected from smallpox to the boy. Surprisingly, the boy had no symptoms of smallpox. All of this happened in 1796. Dr. Jenner put together his hypothesis and research to send to the Royal Society, but as his ideas were too revolutionary, he was requested to conduct more research and data. Confident with his findings, he included his own 11-month-old son to his additional research and finally published his work in 1798. Dr. Jenner named this material used for this method a vaccine, which originated from the Latin word vaca, meaning cow. So, there was no way to prevent smallpox long ago. Surprisingly, at around BC 1000, people in India new vaccination method that inject people with collected pus or scabs of smallpox patients. This method was to spray scab powder on the mucous membrane of the nose or inject the patient pus into the scratched skin. The same vaccination concept as today was used in that a weakened virus was injected into the bodies. Going back to the coronavirus, there has been increasing concerns that the transmission rate and the fatality will increase. As Korea has excellent disinfection systems, it is almost impossible to see herd immunity. Ironically, an exemplary country like Korea is more likely to be in danger if a second wave of a pandemic were to occur. As seen in the process of gaining immunity through smallpox, I believe it may be safer to be infected by a variation of a weaker virus to become immune and safer during the second wave of the pandemic. Rather than fearing the coronavirus, it may be a good idea to make a plan to help our body immune system overcome the virus. That was a food for thought from Professor Kim. Thank you very much.